A while back, I was watching a great video on Ben's channel, Nighthawk and Light, where he made a fairly simple and compact portable saltwater survival bottle. The bottle was used to remove salt water from seawater, so you have pure drinking water. After seeing how well his unit worked, I did some experimenting and came up with this portable solar and battery powered desalinization unit that you see right here. Now before demonstrating this unit indoors and outdoors, first let me go over how the unit was made and the differences between what I made and Ben made. Just like in Ben's video, I have the bottle that's going to be holding the salt water. Over here is the coil. His is horizontal. And he did some testing like I did by placing the coil in water. And the purpose of that, when you boil the salt water inside this bottle, the steam is going to go through this fitting into the coil. And when it does, it's going to condense inside that tube and then water is going to drip out. Now, in order to increase the production to the highest level, you want to make sure that the outside of this coil is much cooler than the inside. He demonstrated in his video using water to cool it, just like I did with my tests. And it does increase the production of the water that comes out. The only problem, the coil is extremely hot and the water that's inside the container to cool the coil is only going to stay cool for about a minute. You're going to have to constantly change the water in order to keep it cooler on the outside to keep the production going. And that part I did not like, so I decided to use air instead to cool the coil. Now it's not going to be as efficient as having water on the outside, but it's going to be consistent and you're not going to have to worry about changing water all the time and the output is very good. This bottle is made out of non-magnetic stainless steel and there is no plastic coating on the inside. It's very important that you do not have a plastic coating because when you heat this, you do not want any of that plastic burning off and ending up in your drinking water. The plastic tumbler here, I believe it's polycarbonate. In his video, he had to suspend the cylinder over a fire that he created and also position this in the water. And I really wanted to have everything just compact, just place it down on a table or maybe in a boat on a calm day or a campsite. I didn't want to have to worry about setting up a fire, holding it and all that stuff. So that's why I designed it the way it is. It's small, this all comes apart. I'll show you in a minute. You can put this right in your backpack. The heat source that I decided to use is a can of Sterno. Very clean burning, and it does a very good job at heating up that bottle. The holder for the can was made using stainless straps and pieces of aluminum a half inch wide, and I believe 1 16th of an inch. There's a rivet that goes on each one of these legs. There's three of them all the way around that sticks in, allows the can to rest on them before you tighten the strap. There's no reason for me to remove this top strap anymore, it's permanent. But when this can does run out of fuel, you can simply take a screwdriver, unscrew this clamp, pull the can off, slide a new one on, and tighten it down. You also have the option of taking the old can, filling it up with wood chips, lighting it, and creating your fire. That way, just keep feeding more wood in to keep the fire going. You can also leave the can with the lid on, place one of those fire cubes that you can buy online right on top. It'll generate enough heat to boil the water inside that bottle. On the very top of this plastic tumbler is a 70 millimeter by 15 millimeter case fan, and it's designed to suck air through the opening at the bottom that I made, all the way in past the coil, and blow it out the top. The constant airflow will keep the outside of the coil cooler, which will help increase the rate of condensation. Using the same unibit that I used to drill a hole in the bottle, I made a hole right over here, and once that was done, I took a rubber grommet, inserted it, slid the copper tube through, and to ensure that no air leaks at this point, to make sure all that goes in the bottom, I put E6000 all around that connection. With this close-up image, you'll be able to see that the fan is sealed to the top of the tube using silicone. Now this unit has two power sources. You have a solar panel, which is a 12 volt, three watt, more than enough to supply power to this fan and full sun. So if you're outdoors, you would be using the solar panel. Unless it's dark out, then you would use the built-in power supply that's mounted on the back of the unit. The power supply is just like this. It holds eight AA batteries. 
And there's an on off switch right here. On the back side of the solar panel, you can see there's a shock key diode. It's a blocking diode. And the purpose of that is to prevent the battery pack from sending power into the solar panel. Power can only go from the panel into the fan. Here's a look at the back side of the unit. Right over here is where the nipple was that you would put your mouth on to suck the liquid out of the cylinder. What I did is I cut it off with the hacksaw, took an eighth inch pipe tap, threaded it, and then thread it in an eighth inch plug with Teflon tape. Now to install this fitting right here, that's connected to the 3 16th inch copper refrigeration tubing. I took the unibit or step drill, drilled a hole right over there, just slightly larger in diameter than the other end of this fitting. This side here is 3 16th inch compression and the side with threads that goes into the bottle is eighth inch male pipe thread. It looks like what you see right over here. To ensure a very good connection with no leaks, there's a stainless washer pushed up against the hex part right over here. Under that is silicone sealant. That's pushed in. The other end that's inside the bottle is tightened down securely using a reducer bushing. One side is quarter inch male pipe thread and the other side is eighth inch female pipe thread. It looks like what you see right over here. Now for ease of transporting, you can see there's a connector right over here. Just put my fingernail and pop it off and this whole panel lifts off. And this way you can put this in a backpack very easily. Now this piece at the bottom right here is nothing more than a PVC pipe bonded to the bottom of this tumbler. It gives this the same height as the unit on the right. Now because this is not going to have water pouring out of here all the time, you're going to have some steam as well. What's going to happen, I drilled the hole slightly larger, inserted the tube, and you can see it goes in and out extremely easy. Just push it in like this, right back that way. You're going to have not only the water entering, but you're going to have the steam and it's going to condense inside this tumbler on the back side of the lid as well as the walls. Condensation will run down to the very bottom and collect as the water comes out of the tube. Keep in mind it's not a very fast process but you will have enough water in here to drink if you give it plenty of time to boil, produce that steam and go through the condenser. Over here you can see I took a can, I riveted the shield purpose of that is to keep the flame and the heat from coming out because if it does come out it's going to be sucked in right over here when it goes past that coil. I want to have the air as cool as possible entering that tumbler. Let me turn this on so you can hear it. Now because all the air is getting sucked in the bottom, if I cover up the bottom you're going to hear the sound change. And all the air blows out here, there, all the way around. Turn it off. Now the first thing I need to do before I demonstrate is make some salt water. We're going to make it match very closely to seawater, which has a salt content of around three or three and a half percent. To make seawater at three and a half percent concentration, you would place 35 grams of salt inside this cup and then you fill it until it says 1,000 grams on the scale. I don't need 1,000 grams, so what I'm going to do is 40% of that amount. So we're going to be using 400 grams as the amount instead of 1,000, and we're going to be using 14 grams for the salt. Turn this on. Let's place the cup on the scale. And we're going to push tear. Now we're going to add 14 grams of salt. I happen to be using sea salt because it's very easy. You know what? Close enough. Now we're going to add water until it says 400 grams. Let's see 
does. And close enough. Let me stir this up good. Then I'm going to take the TDS meter, give you a reading on the salt water and compare it to tap water. Okay. All right, let's take a reading. If this was purified water, distilled, or reverse osmosis, the reading would be very close to zero. So we're gonna see what it is right now. Put it in. Hopefully you can see that. 453 and it's flashing times 10. So that's 4,530 for total dissolved solids. Now we're going to take the water, pour it inside the bottle and get the fire going. All right, you can see the inside of this is empty. I'm gonna leave this open just a hair so when the condensation builds, some of the steam can escape if it has to. Let's push this down and just tip it in. That is done, everything's nice and solid there. Here's our water. And you can see the four, five, three times 10. Take this cover off. Okay. Carefully pour the water in. I'm not gonna have to use all of it, but a good amount. And a little bit more. That should be good. Screw that on. Okay, that's ready to go. Let me get the fire going. It's hard to see, but it is running. The good thing about using the Sterno, it's very clean burning. So you have no problem doing this inside the house. Now, if I was using this outdoors, which I'm going to show you in a minute, I have this shield that I would place just like this. And what that would do is keep the wind from trying to blow it out. For in here, I don't need it. All right, so now we're good to go. I'm going to wait for the water to boil. Once the water starts boiling, then I'll turn on the fan. No sense in turning it on now. I'm only going to waste the batteries. It's going to take a little while for this water to start boiling, around 10 or 15 minutes. So let me wait till the water boils and I'll come right back. Okay, we can now see water being produced at the cup. So let me turn on the fan and then we're gonna wait for the bottle to heat up more. And right here is a close up. You can see through the lid, the water coming out of the copper tube. In a minute, I'll try taking this off so you can actually see it better. Okay, let me wait about 20 minutes to accumulate a good amount of water and we'll check it with the TDS meter. Okay, we now have a sufficient amount of water to perform a test. The sterno can is covered up, and I left the fan running just to cool things down. Let me carefully remove the cover on the tumbler, and inside there's about two and a half inches of water in the bottom. You can see it sloshing around. I'm going to let this cool down for a couple of minutes and then take a TDS measurement. And as you can see, the TDS is right around 11 or 12. That's a huge drop from the seawater. Okay, let's take this outside. 
We're set up outside with the solar panel facing towards the sun and the cooling fan is running. What I'm going to do now is get very close to the solar panel with the cooling fan, hold my hand over the panel to show you that the panel is powering the fan. Right now you can hear the fan running. Take my hand and block the panel. All right, we're set up exactly the way we were on the inside. I have salt water inside the tank. I lit up the sterno, put the shield for the wind around the can, and now we just have to wait 10 or 15 minutes for the production of water to begin. The salt water is now boiling at a very good rate. You can see the condensation inside the tumbler on the underside of the clear lid. Let's open it up and take a peek inside. Working extremely well. And that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up share and check out my extensive video playlist for other videos of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching.